Okay, when, when starting a new project, um, you tend to try and get all your, your site information possible to start to build up the surrounding site around your project, um, depending on you know how big your site and, and what information you have access to, is depending on uh, the quality of the data that you, you get in. Um, in this case, I've been able to find off a government website a, a Esri shapefile uh, that I've been able to uh, bring into the open buildings here, uh, giving me this particular suburb and all the the lots and the, and the streets. Um, I was even a little bit luckier. I was able to um, again go onto the government website and find a, a point cloud scan of this area, and you can just make out there the points indicating um, different colours, indicating round planes. Uh, buildings, trees, etc. Um, but even um, could be even luckier again and, and have a look at um, finding a, a, a reality mesh. So in this case, I was able to uh, get hold of a, um, a reality mesh from from, from near map. Uh, so near map have a, a great collection of uh, reality maps. This is a, a suburb within within Sydney. Um, so again, this helps with the with the the surveying process, but more often than not, um, and depending on the size of your site and the the budgets involved, the information that you're going to get really is quite minimal. And in this case, if we just change this back to black wireframe, you know, you might get a simple. DWG site plan with various spot heights on your site, flat, 2D, etc. So how how can we, we use a bit of intelligence to start to build up our site based on these sporadic um, spot heights that we get on this on this site here? So if we enable generative components inside open buildings, we've referenced in our site plan here, and we want to have a look at some of these little levels and spot spot heights. So um, if we go to to our levels here, let's have a let's turn them all off, and then one by one we can we can turn turn them on so we have some levels for the uh, or some spot heights for the the the, the building heights. Uh, we have some points. We have um, top of curve heights here, and some window heights as well. And and just to Spin around a little bit, you can see that this is entirely flat. Uh, it's come from a 2D 2D file there. So what we can have a have a look at now is is how we may use these levels to or these these spot heights to elevate them and place some points and and a, and a and a very quick mesh. So again, using the range box method, we'll go ahead and, and add a range box around um, around our. Uh, objects like so. Um, right now we'll add in what we call a uh, an Excel exchange node or Excel range node. And what I'm doing with the Excel range node, we just bring bring that by clicking on that uh, transaction that will it'll open up an Excel file that we've pre-created. All I've done is, is put those particular levels into an Excel uh, spreadsheet. So what it's doing it's it's going to say now what I want to do is read all the text that's being filtered by the Excel range node. So I'm, I'm hooking up to that Excel file. I'm looking for a particular sheet in that Excel file, and I'm looking at a range address. Um, and from there, I'm filtering out all those particular uh, levels. So then, what I can do is is use the levels I'm filtering out by, I'm only using the first two rows here, rows A1 to A2. I'm looking at the top of curve heights and the points. So it's they're the ones that are going to give me a, a, a kind of a ground plane. And you can see it's placed those points in the correct elevation there. Now, just a couple of things, quite simple. It, it's, it's, it's pulling the text string out of those values. And all I'm doing is placing those points by an X, Y, and Z range. Oh, and just one thing to consider as well. Um, on the Z range, what we need to do is send these um, uh, text strings to, to a double. Now, bear in mind, I am working in a millimeters file here, and I have meters spot heights. So in order to send this to a, 
a, a, what we call a double type. I'm just putting in front of my little uh, code here, two double, and then timesing it by a thousand to get that millimeters elevation point. And then we use a, a, a mesh node, and it's a good opportunity now to, to go to an illustration mode. Now, now that obviously the mesh is, 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 a, is quite triangulated and, and not overly accurate, but again, it's what the information we've received is provided. It, we can't do, surveyors provided those number of points, we can't do any more unless we do our own survey. From there, we may wish to add a cell on each one of the points, indicating you know, exactly where they are. So turning on the rest of our objects here, what we might like to do here is start to build up a little conceptual model of our uh, of what the building may look like. And, you know, in, our, in the survey file, we're lucky enough, we have a shape indicating uh, the building itself. So what we might do is copy that object through and place it roughly at one of the ground plane points. So if I hit enter to lock it into the z-axis, I might just snap it to this particular point right here. So there we have our shape sort of lying there like so. So just to tidy this up a bit, we might turn off that reference file. And now we can start to look at what this looks like if we start to build a 3D model out of it. So quite simply, go to the modeling tab. Um, we might go to the solids area. We'll do an extrude. Okay, so uh, we just happen to know that this one here would be the, the top point of the ridge line of the roof. So we'll snap it to there. And just to, so we can see it a little bit better, we might give it a, a bit of a brighter color. In this case, we'll just make it white. Okay, so what we'll do quite simply is now go to our solid tools again and use the, the modify solid. And this one here allows us to modify an edge. So we select the solid, select the edge, hit F for front, and we can drag, and I'll hit enter as well, just to keep it in the plane. I can drag that down like so. The other thing we then might want to do is put an imprint on it. So we'll select the solid, select the face, snap to the midpoint of that, select to the midpoint of that, and we've now got a ridge line that we can use to pull up. So that's all we'll do. We'll spin around and do the other, and do the other side, select the object, select the edge, and just drag it down and snap it to that point there. And then again, to bring the ridge line up, we'll click on the solid, click on the edge, hit F for front, enter to lock it in, and snap to the ridge line right there. Okay, so we're, we're using this survey now to, to, to build up um, a very blocky model of, 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 of what we, we intend to build.